Hey everyone, I recently had a chance to use my PicoScope to test for a crank no start situation on a 2009 Hyundai Sonata that had a 2.4 liter engine in it. Um, I just want to share with you, I have the actual vehicle that we did, I did some testing with, and uh, at, towards the end of the video I have a, uh, the same engine in a 2010 Hyundai Tucson, um, which is almost a known good uh, vehicle to do some comparisons. And I'm just going to share with you my diagnostic approach and procedures. There's a few things you don't think about sometimes when you are um, in a shop working on a car. Um, if you step back from the vehicle and take a break, sometimes you see stuff you didn't see. In this case, I'm seeing stuff as I'm editing the video that I didn't even notice happened before. So the technician did state that they had a uh, crank no start situation and they said that they didn't have, uh, they had, didn't have spark. The first thing we always want to do is verify the customer complaint. Uh, this was a crank no start. I put my scan tool on there to check DTCs. There were none. And also I wanted to check for cranking RPM. We got crank no start on this 2009 Hyundai Sonata. It does not sound healthy. We do have cranking RPM. Much to my surprise, when editing the video, I realized that the cranking RPM dropped to zero as it started cranking. So I got this in slow-mo for you. As we'll see, this engine was out of time. I think the computer was confused and didn't know what to do, and that's probably why the RPM dropped to zero on a scan tool. Like I said, I didn't notice it when I was testing. So we set up uh, our scope and stuff to start testing this vehicle. I wanted to check to see if the computer could control spark and fuel. This is cylinder number one. Um, this is the ignition primary for cylinder number one, and this is the injector for cylinder number one. So I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, zoom in on this a little bit. And right off the bat, I was noticing that we have uh, two ignition events per uh, each injector event. So in 720 degrees of revolution, if this was set up properly, uh, it was firing a coil on plug unit twice, which is kind of odd. We don't usually see that type of thing. So here we go, here's the same, uh, the same pattern. Red is the injector, blue is the ignition coil primary. So we're just seeing that the computer is capable of commanding the injectors and the coil. Um, that's great, but I want to add in here our view of the uh, compression waveform. When I put the compression waveform in here for the same cylinder, um, and this is cranking wide open throttle, um, you can see uh, a, a big problem right here. It's pretty apparent right off the bat. Um, it didn't take long to see this. I'll be honest with you guys. When I first got into this vehicle and got this pattern up, I got, I got hung up on why is the injector firing uh, on the compression. Let me get some rulers in here so we can see what's going on. When I use my rulers, I get them close and I like to just zoom in and then move them right to the peak of the compression uh, like so. And I'll do that for the second ruler here. And uh, we'll get it close and go ahead and put that there. And uh, let's go back. So now, now we have our rulers up here so we can see what's going on. We have our compression. This is the expansion or the power stroke. And right here uh, is where we have the exhaust valve opening. Um, and uh, that, that looks pretty good. I can get involved a little more with that in a second. And we have our exhaust flat. Usually with the in-cylinder cranking waveform, this is just going to be a flat line pretty much across. But we're drawing a significant amount of negative pressure here, or vacuum, uh, just after top dead center. So we have our compression, we have our exhaust, and then top dead center here, the piston starts coming down. We're pulling a vacuum, and we shouldn't be doing that. This is pretty obvious that the intake valve is not opening here. It's opening right here. The intake valve should be open over here. Um, so as the piston starts going down, uh, we have our throttle wide open. It's not going to draw much vacuum. We're just going to have a steady uh, pattern straight across. But we're pulling some vacuum. I believe if I zoom in on this section, I believe what's going on here is I think our intake valve is opening right about here. So the piston's coming down from top dead center. It's pulling this vacuum, and as soon as the intake valve opens, um, that's when the pattern's changing. Um, whenever we're looking at uh, these waveforms, what I'm noticing 
is that the, um, and I'm learning this from all the other great guys on YouTube and training and out on nerds and um, diagnostic network, is whenever they, we have the U shape, you know, like this, um, you know, something's not working properly, but when we get the change in that U shape, when that U shape changes, instead of being down like this and going back up the same, when you have the change like this, and it changes its trajectory, that's when a valve's opening. So our intake valve is opening way late, uh, way retarded. And also, let me get zoom back in here so we can see the same pattern again. Also, as we're looking, let's put this scale to 1.5. There we go. Almost can see the whole pattern, but that's okay. Also, that's causing our injector to fire away late. Now, on the Hyundai Tucson that I get to scope out later on, it was like a week later I caught up with another Hyundai, um, you'll see that the injector is firing way over here. So once we got the in-cylinder pressure transducer hooked up, it was pretty obvious that something was going on. I did scope out the cam and crank for this vehicle as well, and we have our... Um, 60 tooth minus two crank sensor. So that's a missing tooth there. What the big thing about this pattern is, I, I was trying to find on the internet, looking around for good patterns. When one is high, the other one should be high with the missing tooth. So if I zoom in to our missing tooth, our intake cam is high and our exhaust cam is low right here. Um, you can see by the zoom, if I go back out a little bit, uh, we'll see everything here. So that's one missing tooth. Intake's high, exhaust is low. We go to the other missing tooth, exhaust is high, and intake is low. They should be both low together uh, and both high together. At this point in my diagnosis, it was this pattern here from the in-cylinder pressure transducer right here is how I knew that we had a problem, okay? It wasn't because of the cam and crank relationship. I was having a difficult time finding a no good pattern. I saved this just so we have it. Um, so going back to the vehicle, um, I felt confident that if we took off the, uh, cam cover, we'd see what's going on there. And sure enough, timing chain was slacked. I did stick a, an extension down cylinder number one, and I brought cylinder number one to top dead center. And as I did that, I'll try to be an artist here for you guys. So as I brought cylinder number one to top dead center, uh, by using an extension, um, With the piston all the way up, and I was using an extension to verify top dead center, the exhaust cam was uh, really close to where it should be. The pointers on these things should point at each other, and the intake cam was about there, give or take. I wish I had gotten a better picture, but you can tell this is slack, and also as I was rotating this engine over, at one point the change has jumped. So this thing was probably even changing timing as it was going. Um, unfortunately, I was not able to capture a screenshot of this after the repair. Um, so this was pretty interesting to see that for sure it was off. Sorry, I didn't get a picture of that. I misplaced it. But I want to share with you also the Hyundai Tucson that I got a chance to scope out. And this is a 2010. Uh, it's the same engine, 2.4 liter. When we got the chance to look at this, I disabled the fuel relay and I just started cranking on it. And you can pretty clearly see here. Red's the intake cam, green's the exhaust cam, and this is our crank again. When both cam, when we hit the missing tooth, both cams are low. We go 360 degrees of crankshaft revolution, and both cams are high. That's how we could tell that uh, there was definitely a difference. And this engine runs, um, just a disclaimer, um, this engine runs, it's set in a P0011 and a P0014 after driving 5 to 40 miles. The engine runs great, there's no drivability or performance issues with it. I don't feel 100% confident that this is an absolute pattern. This thing could be off a tooth or something. I'm not 100% sure, but it ran great. You know, if you clear the codes, it runs, starts, runs. There's no problem with, with this one. I also did a cranking compression test with a fuel disabled. So I, I pulled the fuel pump relay. I left the injectors plugged in, pulled the fuel pump relay, and also uh, put the in-cylinder pressure transducer so we could see what we have here. So this is cranking here on this vehicle. And... Uh, wide open throttle, and I, I, let, I did let it stabilize here. And what we have here is about 100 and, what, 187 PSI. So this thing just cranks at that. And you see we have a flat line here. 
Uh, there is a flat line uh, for the bot from the bottom dead center all the way over to top dead center, all the way back down to bottom dead center. Uh, we have that flat line. Um, if we zoom in right here, we can see, let me increase the scale so we can just put a little, a little bit bigger of an offset there. Here, um, I already have my cursor set up that uh, the change in the bottom U shape, as we talked about before, is right about here. That's about 145 degrees after top dead center. Um, and that's with this thing cranking. Um, so usually most non-variable cam timing engines that I've tested, and I've learned this from other guys on the internet, um, it's not all my knowledge, I'm sharing other people's stuff too, is about 150 degrees after top dead center, 30 degrees before bottom dead center. We're right about there. But this engine was running great. So we have that pattern. Also note that we only have one ignition event per 720 degrees. We don't have that extra one. I think that computer on that uh, Hyundai Sonata was getting a little tripped up and it was almost going into default firing the coil every single uh, revolution of the crankshaft. So that was pretty interesting. Um, and uh, also on the same vehicle we did do a running compression test, okay? So this is all on cylinder number one. And what I did is uh, I let it idle and then we did snap throttle. Um, and I was pretty impressed uh, how much pressure will develop. I'm new to the in-cylinder pressure transducer testing. I'm trying to get my hands on as many vehicles as I can to practice with this stuff. This is uh, just at idle here. Uh, we can draw out our cursor and just take a look at what we got going on just for curiosity's sake. And uh, let me put in rulers. So there we go. So you can see this injector is firing uh, just before top dead center uh, at, at this point of this engine run. I see that in other patterns here. It's very interesting to me. I enjoy like, taking a look at this stuff. I hope you guys are learning something here by uh, checking this out. But as soon as we do the wide open throttle snap, you'll see the, the pressure just really go high in the cylinder. Let me see if I can scroll along and find that for you. Let me X out of here. And... Go through the buffer here. You'll see we're off the chart. I had to set on a zero to 200 PSI scale and just going in here, um, you know, we're, we're off the chart. It's over 200 PSI on a snap throttle. So this was really interesting to me. I enjoyed doing this. I hope you guys get something out of it and keep on using your scope. Let me know if you have any questions. Um, and, uh, you know, I wish I would have got a capture of that other vehicle, but I wasn't able to. But this Tiana Tucson, like I said, I wish I could guarantee this is an absolute uh, in-time engine. It may be out a little bit, so I'm still looking for other patterns to check. Have a great day, everybody. Hey, what are you still doing here? If you or your shop need some training, contact us in the link below. Hands-on auto training. Have a great day.